Well, hello everybody. It seems that within a week of having Mike Rakowski respond with a vengeance after seeing himself featured in my documentaries, another, albeit less known and less emphasised figure from the film, Sir Jeff Olet, decided to comment and then do a reactionary video. He's not as much of a douchebag as Mike, and he might be a bit of a simpleton, or at least a little bit strange, so I'll try and go just a little bit easier on him than I went on Mike. But like Mike, he went on a whole lot about nothing that really has nothing to do with me, but it seems like this guy doesn't actually plan his videos, he just records himself talking out loud, and there's not really a steady train of thought going on, so I wasn't entirely sure if everything he said was actually about me or just him thinking out loud. It started when he commented on the documentary saying, Says right there in the Bible, turn from your wicked ways, as if I am somehow surprised by this, but the documentary he was commenting on already says that Christians should turn from their wicked ways. I then asked him when he is going to turn from smoking, because he loves to talk on his channel about what he thinks everybody else should be doing, but he still smokes, as I exposed him for doing in my second documentary. Now, understandably, some of you might think that there isn't any concrete biblical evidence that smoking is wrong. I understand that. But as far as I can tell, Jeff seems to think that smoking is a sin. At least smoking marijuana, anyway. And he is a big fan of Michaela Cooper. I'll get onto that in a moment. But Michaela Cooper has spoken against smoking on her channel before. It's hard to understand everything he says because his punctuation is terrible, but he was defending himself by claiming, I never went around saying that I was probably a saved individual with the way I've been since I backslid. So are you trying to argue that you're not really saved then? He insisted in another comment that I should be worrying about my own self, but is he worrying about his own self if he can't even claim that he's saved, but he spends time on his channel preaching holiness and how to be saved to everybody else? At least in this comment, he did acknowledge that he's not right with God. But apparently, me calling him out on his cigarettes makes me a hypocrite, but I don't think he understands what that word means. What really grinded his gears, though, was that I also included Michaela Cooper in the film, and he stated in his reactionary video that this is the thing that made him the most angry. Well, the thing is, Jeff, Michaela Cooper is a false prophetess, and like you, she tells people to turn from their sin, but she also has some skeletons in her closet as well. She just says blatant lies about the Bible that aren't true, and has refused correction when I confronted her about her lies pertaining to repentance in the Greek and Hebrew. But enough of that for now. In his final comment, and I haven't heard from him since, is that I have no discernment and I have no ability to rightly divide. Apparently I'm deceiving people and will be with Satan one day. There were no examples of my bad discernment, of course. It was just an empty claim with no feedback that I can actually act upon. Well, the thing is, Jeff, I don't want to insult you if you have a genuine dyslexic problem. But the grammar and punctuation in your comments is very difficult to discern. And it makes me wonder if you are as bad at reading as you are at writing. Had you continued watching the documentary, instead of getting offended, you would know that I showed you multiple scriptures in the Bible that say, repent and don't add this suffix of your sins. So when you say the Bible says repent of sins on your channel, you are adding words that these verses don't say. You are reading the word repent and you automatically assume that it has something to do with turning from sin, when it's not evident that that was discussed in the passage. I also showed you Matthew 21.32 to prove that the message of repentance was to believe on Christ, not turning from sin. And I also used Acts 19.4 as well. I also showed you how that God repented. So, Jeff, does God need to turn from his sins just because the Bible uses repent, even the phrase, repent of this evil? None of your comments or even your reactionary video address that. You just threw various ad hominems against me, but enough about that. Let's listen to some of the comments in your video reply, and I'm going to try to explain to you why everything you're saying is stupid. So, I ran across a video I ran across a video earlier today and I can't access the video because evidently I have been blocked. I didn't block you, Jeff. If I did block people, I can only block you from commenting on a video. I didn't do that anyway. I can't block you from watching it though. I don't know if you're having difficulty accessing the video, but that's not really my fault. There are people with far worse personalities than you who have bombarded my comment section endlessly. People who I wish would just take a boat and a millstone into the ocean and finish the job. But they're still allowed to post comments on my channel. I didn't block you, Jeff. I promise. 
So in this video, I'm listening to, well, at the beginning, it has like a disclaimer. Basically, somebody trying to cover their tracks in case they say something about somebody out here that could be saved. While I wasn't really trying to cover my tracks, Jeff, it's more that I didn't want to deliberately misrepresent somebody. And some of the people who say, repent of your sins, mean something very different than what you mean when you use that catchphrase. So I didn't want to be too trigger happy, calling people condemned and unsaved. Which is nice. It's nice somebody points that out, but... Well, I'm glad you think so. So what's the problem then? The sad thing about it is, why would you make a video thinking that somebody could be saved when you think that what they're preaching is not the truth? Well, what's strange about this question, Jeff, is that later in your video, you will answer your own question. You can easily take it upon yourself to sit here and say something and be wrong. And that doesn't mean you're a false prophet. So there's your answer. To you this right now, you can lay the Bible on this that if you're out here preaching a different gospel, then you're the one not preaching the truth. So if I was preaching a different gospel out here and somebody thought that's what it was, then why would they lay a disclaimer thinking that person could possibly be saved? Well, again, Jeff, this might be your problem with the English language here, but you didn't read the disclaimer properly. The disclaimer did not strictly say that there might be saved individuals preaching a, quote, different gospel, end quote. Rather, they might be featured as being on the wrong side of the issue by using the catchphrase, because a lot of people preach repent of sins, but they may mean a very different thing than what you mean, and like a lot of Christians, they're just copying and repeating the lingo. If repenting of sin just meant recognise you're a sinner and believe on Christ to save you, I wouldn't take issue with it. The problem is that lots of different people, including you, mean different things. Is it turned from all sin? Or is it turned from all known sin? Or is it a lifestyle change? Or does there just have to be some change? Does it mean being sinlessly perfect or not? We ask all of these different Christians, we get a whole bunch of different answers. And that's why the catchphrase is stupid. If you're leading somebody astray, which is basically what somebody would be doing if they preached a different gospel, then, you know, it's better off you had, a, you know, the old millstone around your neck. Which is something that you implied about me in your comments on the documentary, that you think I have a millstone around my neck. But funnily enough, I have exactly the same feelings towards people like you and Michaela Cooper and the so-called gospel that you preach. So uh, it was about, does the Bible sit here and say, do you have to turn from sin? Not actually, Jeff. That's not precisely what it was about. It was about the phrase, repent of sins, showing how that the phrase is not in the Bible, yet Christians constantly and endlessly parrot and repeat this phrase. And it was also about how repentance for salvation doesn't mean to turn from your sins. It means to believe on Christ. Now, you go Google for yourself, where in the Bible does it say to turn from your ways? And you will find plenty of scriptures out there that actually point that you do have to turn from your ways. Yes, Jeff, we know. I quoted from Second Chronicles 7.14 in the documentary, and there was a whole section in the documentary about turning from sin. But the problem is you got so offended too early in the film that you didn't get that far. That this is a requirement for salvation. It is. No, it isn't a requirement for salvation, Jeff. The requirement for salvation is answered in Acts 16. The prison keeper asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And the answer was given, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Nowhere did Jesus or the apostles ever say, Turn from sin and thou shalt be saved. You of course think that's what happened when you see the word repent, or when you see Jesus saying, Sin no more. Because again, you don't read things properly. Jesus even pointed it out again in Acts when he came into Paul's life, turning from the powers of Satan and turning to God, coming out of darkness and into the light. You appear to have confused two different things here, Jeff, because Jesus didn't tell Paul, come out of darkness into the light. He asked Paul, why is he persecuting him? And then sent Paul to preach without asking him specifically to turn from his wicked ways. Coming out of the darkness and into the light was Paul's recollection of his own preaching 
to the Gentiles, and we have no direct transcript of most of his conversations. I've known this whole time that darkness was sin. And I never heard no one else out here say it until I did witness it, that somebody else professed it. And if they're going to profess it, and I'm professing it, then I know it's the truth. Coming out of darkness and into the light doesn't mean turn from sins and change your ways. How do I know that? Because Acts 26, 18 proves what it means. You believe on Christ, you are sanctified by faith, and then he forgives you. Because like I said, it's your sin that makes you wicked in God's eyes. And there's plenty of proof in the Bible to back this up. Correct, Jeff. But what there isn't in the Bible is the idea that if you change your lifestyle and stop sinning, you're off the hook now for all of your previous sins. You need to actually believe on Christ to be forgiven of sins. You're going to be of the devil just like if you're living for the flesh. You die, and if you're led by the Spirit, you live. So, And you're an unrepentant smoker. How can people out here make videos trying to denounce people out here preaching the truth? Because you're not preaching the truth, Jeff. And because you're casting burdens on other people when you're not even lifting a finger to carry those burdens yourself. You tell everybody else that they need to be obedient and not live after the flesh. But you're smoking, even though you believe that smoking is sinful, and you even admit that you're backsliding, so you're giving other people advice to get into heaven, but you're completely incapable of following your own suggestions. This is the first time I've ever found a video of myself being in somebody else's video. Well, that's because nobody has ever heard of you before. The vast majority of your videos have less than 10 views because they have virtually no production value and they're unwatchable and boring for most people, even the people that would agree with you. In fact, you asked me, why would anybody ever watch my foolish videos? Well, the thing is, Jeff, a lot more people watch my videos than yours. And it's not that people don't watch your videos because they don't like the truth, Jeff. They don't watch your videos because the production quality is terrible. A lot of your videos don't have any real subject matter or any train of thought at all. You're just rambling onto the camera, saying nothing for 40 minutes straight every time. If your videos actually had a purpose, or you actually taught carefully planned teaching in them, your videos would get more exposure, and eventually there would be more videos like people like me rebuking you. But it wasn't, it wasn't technically me that pissed myself off about this person making this video. It was Michaela Cooper. Because, again, I've never heard Michaela Cooper ever say anything wrong except for only one thing. And even I could be wrong. And so, he, so could a lot of other people when it comes to the rapture of the church. Well, be pissed off, Jeff. Michaela Cooper is a false prophetess. And she's basically wrong about everything. Like you, she can't even understand the basics of the gospel because she thinks that it's all about surrender, surrender. But Christ and the apostles never used the word surrender in this Bible one time. And it was Christ who surrendered his life on the cross. You didn't surrender your life on the cross for our sins. So if she can't even get the basics of the gospel right and you've never found anything wrong with what she says, there's something wrong with you. I take it upon myself to be wrong. But when it comes to salvation, like so many people are doing, that's the biggest mistake you can do. How the rapture happens, how the tribulations happens, how the future happens is one thing. Talking about your salvation is more important than any of that. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have not been wrong about it. I'm sorry, Jeff, you have definitely been wrong about that because you want to talk all day about surrender. But again, as I said not in the Bible. So the words coming out of your mouth, talking about salvation, aren't the same kinds of words that are coming out of the mouth of Christ and his apostles when they talk about salvation. I mean, I really don't even have to talk anymore about this person, the person that found a video with me in it, or anybody else. I don't have to talk about these things. I can sit here and point out what the Bible says, and it refutes everything that these liars are out here speaking. Well, that's because trying to argue the Bible with people like you is a bit like playing a game of chess against a pigeon. It doesn't matter how good of a chess player I am, it's not a game of skill. It's a game of you kicking the pieces all over the board, defecating all over it, and then strutting around like a supposed winner. But all you do is you just quote my random verses, and then you act like you've proven a point. When you quote verses like, come out of darkness and into the light, you're not proving the repent of sins gospel. You're just quoting random verses and then you presuppose that you think you know what they mean.
Why would it say, humble yourself, turn from your ways, and God would heal your land? Why would it say that? Well, that's a rather silly question, Jeff, because the passage that you are quoting from, Second Chronicles 7, tells you the reason. It says, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So then, what does this look like? Well, go to the previous chapter. Solomon's prayer already told you. If the people Israel are put to worse before the enemy, God will bring them back into the promised land. If there is no rain, God will send the rain. When the stranger prays, God will answer the stranger's call. When the people go out to war, God will maintain their cause. So there's your answer, Jeff. The point of God telling people to turn from their wicked ways was so that God would send the rain on the land and help them in battle and heal their land. Notice it didn't say anything about eternal life or salvation in that passage. On behalf of God, let me apologize that that was so confusing. But it's not talking about Israel. It's talking about you and I and everyone else out here. So why would it sit here and say that God has brought you into the fold to make Israel jealous and then actually say that you can be disconnected from God? And then, it, and then it goes, and in, that, in those scriptures I'm talking about, and it's not, believe me, I'm taking it and I'm saying it a little bit different, but it's because of disobedience. Romans 11, 11, if you keep on reading through there. So even this guy that makes a video talking about other people, I heard, you know what I heard him say? The same thing as the majority of Christians out here. It's not about your righteousness. It's about Christ's righteousness. No, it's not. So if I sit here and say I put it on Jesus Christ and the finished work of Christ at the cross, guess what? If I go around preaching that message along with the majority of people out here that are wolf in sheep's clothing, guess what? It's going to lead people to believe that I don't even have to worry about how I live my life. Well, you don't worry about how you live life now because you're still smoking and you got annoyed when I pointed it out. And you're still preaching this give your life to Christ gospel when the Bible says Christ laid his life down for us. And this person even pointed out my cigarettes. And see, the thing about it is, I mean, I have literally pointed out that I backslid. So if you backslid, you ain't right with God. So why should we listen to you tell the rest of us how to get to heaven if you're not even qualified for it yourself? There's been multiple. I mean, I just sit here and said the other day I knew I was that close. But see, I'm in the same fate as the majority of the world. I don't want to surrender. I'm not a willing person and I'm not a humble person. I have to say here. Credit where it is due. That's very honest of you, Jeff. And very noble that you admit that because most people of your ilk wouldn't. It takes a big man to admit that he's wrong. The world is full of a lot of tiny men. But maybe if God kept telling the Old Testament Israelites to turn from wickedness and they kept failing to do it, and you also keep failing to do it, wouldn't that tell you that your repent of sins gospel message isn't working for you? Maybe then this is why you should just drop that false gospel and just trust in Christ's righteousness for your salvation, not going about trying to establish your own righteousness. And you never know, you could actually be saved with 100% certainty. I don't know why they're out there going to church and wasting their time honoring God with their lips, not their heart, and, and, and having a form of godliness. Hey, I'm a hallelujah. We could ask you the same question, Jeff. Why are you honoring God with your lips? I'm trying to speak the things on behalf of God on your channel. If you won't surrender your cigarettes, why are you wasting your time? God isn't listening to liars. I mean, to, to sinners. It's right there in the Bible. I mean, did anybody have to be, did anybody need, I mean, I don't think you even needed wisdom to understand the ignorance that the Bible points this stuff out and people are more ignorant to believe in their own garbage that they're hearing from people out here. At the end of the day, I still didn't lie that the majority of people are going to end up on the lake of fire that call themselves born again Christians. That's a fact. It is a fact, but you're one of them by your own acknowledgement. So maybe instead of telling me not to worry about you, you should actually worry about yourself before you go around telling the rest of the internet how to be born again when you're disqualified. So why would these Bibles, why would there be all these scriptures in the Bible turn from your ways? Huh? We've already answered that question, Jeff. You might as well ask, if salvation is without works, why does the Bible tell us to do a bunch of works? Well, you could literally pick any reason under the sun. Just don't pick salvation as the reason. 
I mean, isn't it weird how an atheist can sit here and call a Christian out because they're a hypocrite, because they're telling you to live a certain life, but yet they're not even living that life themselves? Hey, you know what? Again, they're saying they're a Christian. I'm not saying I'm a Christian. Call me out on my cigarettes all you want. Whether you smoke or not isn't actually the qualifier for being a Christian, Jeff. Lots of people call themselves Christian, but the thing is in the Bible, a Christian was generally something that other people called believers rather than a term that they came up with themselves. I've already seen that ploy when people start using scriptures as if they're saying it's okay. It says, you, if you say you don't sin, if you if you never sin, is that a ploy? Is that it, it, Are you trying to make excuses up by twisting these scriptures out here to sit here and say it's okay to live in sin? We're not actually going around saying that, Jeff. It's just that people like you accuse us of saying that because as per Romans 3, 8, I'm afraid that your damnation is just. But the difference between me and you is that I acknowledge that we're all sinners, including me and including you. So nobody's going to heaven by turning from their sins. I don't have any excuses for my sins, Jeff. And I don't tell other people to turn from their sins in order to get into heaven. You're the one who's burdening other people that they need to walk this difficult path and change their ways to get into heaven. But by your own admission, you don't participate in this yourself. I've already seen that ploy. I've already seen when people sit here and say, well, what about your sins? That's not what it's, that's not the point. That's not the point. But if you can't put down the cigarettes, if you just have too many excuses why it's too hard for you, maybe you should just stop posting videos on YouTube for a while about how to be saved and be obedient, and you should humble yourself and turn from your wicked ways and surrender first, pull the beam out of your eye, and then come on YouTube and point to the moat in everybody else's. At least I'm I, I'm not as so ignorant that I've that I've yet not to witness other people out here admitting backsliding and going apostate and falling away. And this is exactly what the church is. It's a double mindedness. Let's let's look at double mindedness. Let's get the calculator out and get the magnifying glass out. What do you think a double mindedness would be? It'd be just like honoring God with your lips and not your heart. It'd be just like sitting here saying I'm a born again Christian, but yet I'm out here living for the devil. That is exactly what it would be like. That's not what double mind does mean is jeff that's not how james defined it it's a crying shame it's a crying shame that there, there are people out here making videos about other people technically i'm not making the, these videos to pinpoint any specific person but there is a crying shame when people go out here and make a video about a certain person. The video wasn't specifically about you, Jeff. You were just featured in it, like there were several other people featured in it. The thing is, you mentioned multiple names in your video addressing my documentary. You mentioned Billy Graham. You mentioned Morgan Freeman for some reason. You mentioned Sam Shamoon. But that doesn't mean that your video was about them. So how was what I did any different? How could I sit here and say that I was affected by demons, witness that video on TikTok where a woman is speaking in tongues and her daughter interprets it and I felt the demons be lifted off of me. And you're going to sit here and think that I'm going to sit here and think that I'm saved because if I was saved, then the Holy Spirit would not allow no demons into my life. Casting out demons by talking pagan psychobabble didn't come from the Bible. It's charismatic witchcraft nonsense. But if you've got all these demons attacking you left, right and centre, maybe once again it's a sign that your repent of sins gospel message isn't really working for you and you should just reject it entirely and be saved from that nonsense and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you might be saved. And then maybe, just maybe, you won't have all of these demonic attacks. Why make videos out here talking about so-and-so as if because a Calvinist doesn't like a free grace, and a free grace doesn't like a Calvinist, and a and a bat and and these same people don't like Catholics. Well, to be fair, free graces don't really like anybody, and in fact, from what I've seen lately, they don't even like each other. But that's completely irrelevant to my documentary. What is it? here? I am making an insane video about a bunch of insane people out here. That's right. Good chance you don't like this message. You're an insane person. Well, you must have a monopoly on sanity then. Rather like Mike Rakowski, funnily enough. 
Now, I'm wondering why, when I was reading it about righteousness, about why that if you didn't try to strive for righteousness, didn't practice righteousness, then you would be affiliated with the demonic force out here. People say, your past, present, and future sins have been taken away. Well, I wonder why the demons are still reigning in your life. You're the one who's admitted to having demonic attacks and needing them cast out by psychobabble. I'm not having that problem. And the reason why you still got the door open to sin, and the reason why you wouldn't think twice of giving into the flesh instead of following after the spirit. But then at the end of the day, you're going to say, Hallelujah. Let me read the Bible. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me call my, myself a watchman. Well, the thing is, I don't say any of that. So you're just rambling incoherent nonsense. And sit here and lie to everybody and deceive people and work the deeds of the devil. I mean, the devil is working through Christians out here. That's a sickness. Because if, as long as you're going to tell somebody that they can remain in sin, you might as well strap that millstone around your neck. Payment's coming, and I ought to be saying mother. Now, don't like my cuss words and don't like my cigarettes. That ain't hey. You, you, at the end of the day, you're not liking that. That is that isn't a part of your salvation. How convenient for you. Well, I'm going to leave it there, folks, because the rest of the video is just rambling on about absolutely nothing that doesn't have anything to do with the documentary or me. So I guess we'll park it there. Jeff, I hope you see this one day, and I hope you get saved. But unfortunately, the reality is that you probably won't. Blah 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 Well all you gotta do is believe Jeff Jeff Are you listening to yourself here? Jeff